Hi guys, welcome back to the weird side of YouTube. I'm your host, author DC Knipe, and this is The Legend of Gaming, the show where I talk about games instead of playing them. And today I am going to be remaking one of my very first Legend of Gaming videos, which is Disenchanted, how I felt about Breath of the Wild. Um, my opinion is very uh, unpopular, which is fine, but I really wanted to uh, add on to this and add voiceover work to it, so um, hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy it. I don't know if I'm the biggest Zelda fan, but I know I've loved the series for 20 years now. I composed and recorded my own ocarina song at 15. The song of dreams, it's what you're hearing now. What can be said about Breath of the Wild that hasn't already been said? Well, quite a lot, apparently. We have to start at the very beginning. I was seven years old and just received Super Smash Bros. 64. I was so excited to fight with my favorite Nintendo characters. There was only one problem. I only knew about half the cast. Who is this mysterious elven hero? He was so much fun to play as. My best friend at the time referred to him as Zelda. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> We'd fight. Link, me, versus Fox, him. And he wondered why I liked Link so much if I didn't even know who he was. And so he gifted me his copy of The Legend of Zelda, Oracle of Seasons. I remember thinking the cartoon intro was really impressive. And the game itself was super fun. But I knew this Link wasn't the same one from Smash 64. This wasn't the hero I sought. This wasn't my link at all. And this wasn't the adventure I craved. But first, a word from our sponsor. Thank you. 
And now back to our regularly scheduled shenanigans. I played Ocarina of Time for the first time later that year. I found it by accident at a movie video game rental place called Pick a Flick in my small southern hometown. I started someone else's save file and... wandered around aimlessly for the entire three days I had it. Everything was so beautiful, so intriguing, so gigantic and open. I fell in love with it. And when it came time to return it, my heart was heavy. For growing up in a house of limited income, I knew it would be a while before Hyrule was mine. A few years later, The Wind Waker came out with a pre-order bonus. I begged and begged my dad for it, and he finally gave in. Not only was I getting The Wind Waker, I was finally laying claim to the Hyrule that I loved and adored. And this time, I was older and wiser enough to follow the story. And I fell even deeper in love with the Legend of Zelda. Since then, I've played every game in the entire series. Majora's Mask is my favorite one to date. I know that it's had a bit of a renaissance lately, what with the 3D remake and it coming out on Nintendo Online, but at the time when I loved it, a lot of people hated it and considered it the black sheep of the Zelda family. Uh, the reasons they gave for hating it were my reasons for loving it. I loved the time constraint system, which in my opinion makes sense in fantasy games or any game that has a time limit that you're trying to stop an evil person from doing something destructive. Uh, it's realistic to me. I love the time limit. I found it unique and interesting and fun and challenging. I also really loved how surreal and weird the story itself was, and I also loved the fact that they reused character models from Ocarina of Time because it is a mirrored world from Hyrule. And I understand that was done because they had uh, only a year to make the game, so they didn't have a enough time to make anything from ground up, the ground up, but they also wanted it to be different. Instead of making it in the same world, they made a different world, reused character assets, blah blah blah, and I think that is genius and they only had one year to make it and in my opinion they made the best Zelda game to date. It's also my favorite. Right next to Ocarina of Time but Majora's Mask still edges it out just a bit just because I love the characters, the side quests, all the characters have emotions, feelings, schedules that they do. You have to run around. You can only see them at certain times of day at certain places because they're they're like real people. They have real lives. And that's just not something I've seen in a Zelda game since, unfortunately. When Breath of the Wild was first shown off, we were promised more than what we received. Breath of the Wild is a lot of things. A masterpiece is not one of them.
Is it terrible? Mm, no. But to me, even with the DLC, it feels incomplete. Why is that? The magical potion that is The Legend of Zelda has always had three ingredients. Action, adventure, and story. Action being the sword play and puzzle solving. Adventure being the thrills of exploring different areas. And story, the thread that weaves it all together. Without those three things in perfect harmony, you don't have a Zelda game. With 120 shrines of varying challenges, Breath of the Wild has the action. Unfortunately, it is all weighed down by its subpar weapon durability system, or lack thereof. Every single weapon, even the Master Sword to a degree, breaks in this game. They took some of the most iconic, mythical weapons from the series past and reduced them to the status of a fucking Deku Stick. Honestly, as a longtime fan, that feels like a slap in the face. Adventure. Hyrule is bigger than ever before. And it's open world, so you can do whatever you want. There are so many different places you can go. Unfortunately, it's a barren wasteland of nothingness. Worse than Twilight Princess's Hyrule Field. An open world doesn't mean empty, Nintendo. Yes, there are enemies to fight and villagers to save, but it all seems entirely devoid of life. And hey, maybe Nintendo did that on purpose, considering it's post-apocalyptic or whatever. But after a few hours of fighting through the same old hordes... Walking or horseback riding through a barren wasteland. Just to find another divine beast, this game's poor excuse for a temple, that's exactly like the other two you just conquered. Or a storyless village full of zombie-like NPCs. It just leaves you depressed. So what about the story? Literally most of it happens in flashbacks. The champions, sages, are great, the descendants not so much, and their stories are enchanting, but short. And you know, as someone with a novel that deals a lot with flashbacks, I have to say... It 
If almost all of your story takes place in the past, you don't have a story. You have a prequel. Which brings me to this. This is the story Breath of the Wild needed, Nintendo. It still wouldn't have been perfect, but it would have been better. Overall, it was a good story. I just really hate that they chickened out and just made everything get undone. I much prefer the original Hyrule Warriors to this one, actually. Um, if it was going to be a prequel, I really wish it would just been a, Zelda, a regular Zelda game prequel and Breath of the Wild just wouldn't have happened at this point. Like, it just makes me double down, honestly, that the fact that this exists makes me wonder why Breath of the Wild exists. Like, if you could do this story-wise, why did you write Breath of the Wild? Because, as I've said repeatedly, if all you have is flashbacks, you don't have a story, you have a prequel. And why? Why did you chicken out at the end and change the ending to where Breath of the Wild does not actually happen in this timeline. That just makes it all the more moot. It makes the point moot. It makes... Ugh, it makes me feel like I wasted my time, like it doesn't fucking count. And I know that Higher Warriors isn't canon, but playing through that, realizing the story is much better than Breath of the Wild was, wishing that this was the story Breath of the Wild had, it's just really aggravating. Like, I don't know. Playing Age of the Calamity made me dislike Breath of the Wild more, actually. I'm not going to say that Breath of the Wild would have been better if it were more like Ocarina of Time. I understand that the entire point of it was to make it different. But some of those decisions completely baffle me. Not every weapon needed to break. At least put a blacksmith in every village to fix them. Instead of stagnant NPCs, they could have given them schedules like in Majora's Mask. And for the love of Hylia, give me a reason to explore. I was desperate for more villages, and every village should have had flashbacks. Nevertheless, Breath of the Wild is a beautiful game. I've 100 percented it, including DLC on the Wii U. And even though it has its fair share of flaws, and I think they could have and should have done so much better given how long it took them, I still love it for what it is, and I'm excited for its future. In my opinion, a bad Zelda game is still a good game. I just hope they try to improve the formula. Well, here we are at the end of 2024. And Tears of the Kingdom has been released. And by now it's old news, because a new Zelda game just came out. We'll talk about that in a bit. But, I have not yet played Tears of the Kingdom. And here are my reasons why. Number one, they did not fix the weapon system. Number two, as far as I can tell, they did not improve how empty Hyrule Field is. They just added more empty areas for you to explore for no reason. Um, 
and it just doesn't seem interesting to me. My best friend Mindy has advised me to play it before I make an opinion on it, and I kind of want to. I'm debating, but I did promise myself when it first came out that, or was first announced, that if the weapon system was so was still horrible, I wouldn't torture myself with it again. Because honestly, the idea of replaying Breath of the Wild sounds like hell to me, which is insane considering I love playing every other Zelda game again. But she says the story's great, it's much better than Breath of the Wild, and part of me really wants to play it. Part of me also wants to just watch the cutscenes on YouTube, but I do kind of want to give it a chance. So if I do, there will be a sequel to this uh, episode all about Tears of the Kingdom and probably how it disappointed me. <laughs> I'm joking. I am trying to be hopeful, but I'm, I'm not sure. We will decide. If you guys want me to play it, uh, tell me. Advise me to play it. Tell me. Don't don't count your eggs before they hatch. Tell me I need to experience it before I judge it. Blah, 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 blah. But as of now, no plans. Because it still looks like it'll disappoint me. And honestly, I think that's fine. At this point, I've had four years to get over Breath of the Wild and what a disappointment the newer Zelda games are. And if this is the new Zelda formula and I'm not a fan of it, that's, that's okay. I don't have to play these games. I can just go back and replay the old ones that I love and enjoy so much. Speaking of, I will always love the Legend of Zelda series. It is permanently tattooed on my heart. Even if I'm disappointed by the newer entries, they do not stain my love for Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, the Minish Cap, the Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, A Link to the Past, Four Swords Adventures, the list goes on and on. Oracle of Seasons, Oracle of Ages. I love so many Zelda games that will stay near and dear to my heart for the rest of my life, I'm sure, and I will always enjoy replaying them. Except for Breath of the Wild. <laughs> but... I'm trying to end this on a hopeful note. The Legend of Zelda series has a long and rich history. In my opinion, it has changed the fantasy genre of video games for the better. A lot of newer fantasy series, newer than Zelda anyway, uh, owe a lot to Zelda. Uh, they borrow a lot from the old school formula, like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask such as the Souls games, like the newer Elden Ring game that I like so much. That's why I like it. It's because it was inspired by Zelda. A lot of these newer games owe their existence to The Legend of Zelda and how it changed the face of video games forever. And even if I am disappointed in the newer entries, nothing can take that away from my beloved series. And they just announced a new Zelda game, actually it's been released already, that has a story element that I've been wanting for a really long time, which is playing as Zelda and having to save Link. So maybe there's hope. <laughs> I haven't played it yet, but I'm really excited to. Hopefully I'll be able to get it for Christmas. But I'll let you guys know what I think. And... I actually do get to end this video on a hopeful note because this looks like so much fun. You get to change her outfit. She even starts in her Ocarina of Time outfit, which is amazing for me. It's so cute, just like Link's Awakening, the remake on the Switch, which I adored. Um, I'm just really excited and uh, I can't wait to play it. But overall, I guess I'm not entirely disenchanted by The Legend of Zelda. Kind of the opposite, really. I love you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.